well, well. Welcome to the podcast for Selfless Sex and She Comes First. My name is Dr. Nick Myers, sitting here on January the 2nd, 2022. Thank you guys for still hanging in there. I hope you guys had a happy and safe New Year's. Christmas as well. Christmas. Happy holidays to you guys as well. And we're moving on from that into the brand new year. And um, I got some stories to tell you, but I won't. You know, I've been away for far too long. And today, well, first off, I just want to thank everyone just for hanging in there throughout the entire year. And, you know, I've been gone for at least six months. But I also realized some of my podcasts weren't published, which is kind of strange. But anyhow, but today's topic is something that I did last year, I believe. And I want to talk about some sexual resolutions for 2022. So let's get into that topic today. Well, what I did was I just went around the internet really quickly and I found a few new resolutions for you guys just to try. Of course, these are just suggestions for you. So um, here we go. And the first one I have for you is this. Number one, try something new each week. Try something new sexually each week. Meaning, if you think about it, what kills sex or sexual desire? And that's routine. Doing the same thing the same way every time over and over again. And you have orgasms the same way. Then you roll over and fall asleep. That's routine. That can get boring over time. Where while it may be satisfying to some, it may get boring. It's the same thing. You got to break it up. So instead of always having sex in the bedroom, have sex outside of the bedroom, on the sofa, or in the car like you did back when you were teenagers, or have sex in the front seat of the car like like back when you were teenagers. Just watch out for the stick shift. And just start in maybe have some outdoor sex and or something. But you got to spice it up. Number two, stay playful. Sex always doesn't have to be a chore. It should never be a chore if you think about it. And not always so super serious. Question for you. How often do you guys laugh? How often do you two or three laugh when you're having sex and you're actually having a good time? Because if it's not as serious and it's very light and it's kind of airy and everyone's having a good time, it helps to keep that spark alive. And just by taking like some of the pressure off of your sexual partner or partners, it can make the whole event better. And also, while you are actually engaged in the sex, talk about it. Even if it's dirty talk or fun talk, you know, I'm not saying tell jokes and shit like that. But, you know, just keep it like... My third suggestion may sound counterintuitive to what I just said a second ago, but for number three, you may have to schedule sex. And that sounds so clinical and so dry and all the other jazz. But don't forget, this is 2022. People are all people are already overscheduled anyhow, and they may not put sex on that list. So you may go longer than you would like without sex. So you know what? If you put it on your calendar, you'll do it. Because you know why? It shows you and it shows your partner and your and or your partners that sex is important. Like you go to the doctor, that's very important. You go to the dentist, that's also important. You schedule intimate time with your partner, that's also extremely important. So don't forget to put that in there, pencil it in, or use a pen, you know, so you don't just kind of skip over it and rush by it. And also, be sure to set out a good block of time so you're not actually just rushing through sex to get on to the next thing that, that's on your list. Just break out a couple hours. That's fine, because you know why? Sexuality and sexual health is very important. Number four, explore your sexual desires. Meaning, let go of the shoulds. I should have done this. Maybe I should have done that. Maybe I would have liked that if I would have tried that. Please keep in mind, you are the one who gets to define what your sexual happiness is. So if you want to try something by yourself through masturbation first or something like that, or you want to try something with your partner 
or introduce a topic or introduce something that you want to try with your partner because like you may like it. I always say start slow, have a conversation about it. Don't just jump into it. Think about it. And if, it, if the stars align pro properly, go for it. But I will say this again. You get to find, you get to define what your sexual happiness is. Number five, improve your sexual communication skills. And what I mean by that is that your partner or partners cannot read your mind. They really can't. So you actually have to learn how to talk to them about what you like, what you dislike, and your boundaries. Meaning, so let's say your partner or partners, they're not touching you, or, or he or she is, is not touching you th the way that you like. And you, you're not getting as much pleasure out of it because you just don't like it. So they're going to keep doing that because you know why? They think that you actually like that. So until you tell them what's going on and how you really feel, they're just going to keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. So, yep. So speak your piece. But the key is this. Do not have this conversation in the bedroom. Have it any place else, but just not in the bedroom, especially while you are engaged in an activity. But I'll say this again, but if you're if it's that bad, you know, just stop. Say, you know, I really don't like this, just stop. Period. And the final resolution I have for you all is more like a challenge. Now think about it like this. Because you are being more playful during sex, because you are talking about sex more, because you are, are scheduling sex, showing your partner or partners that it's actually very important to you, because you are talking about your sexual desires with each other, you may want to have more sex. And that's not a bad thing at all. That should, actually is very good. So my challenge is this. Can you engage in 101 days straight a sexual activity where you and or you or your partner or partners has an orgasm or something fun like that. Can you do that for 101 days straight? So that will take you up through March, probably in the April. Springtime. There you go. And it's a good way to keep you keep your partners warm during the winter months as well. So to close out this podcast, I know it's been a minute since I put up a podcast, probably six or seven months. Uh, that's OK, though. There were a lot of things going on. I'm back here right now. So um, and I do actually really enjoy this. Happy 2022 to everyone out there. And let's make this our or your best, your best sexual year to date. So I always like to end on a question. And my question for everyone out there is this. What, what are your top three sexual resolutions for 2022? And please feel free to leave those in the comments down below. But of course, if they're really nasty, uh, YouTube or whoever's going to block them. So just be careful about that too. So on that note, I'm out. You guys have a great day. Stay tuned and I will try to talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.